What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel for the continuation of the repair you've seen in my previous video on this Bentley Flying Spur project. But before we get to that, if you enjoy cars as much as I do, be sure you click that subscribe button so you can follow along with all my projects regardless of how weird they are. Now in my previous video I discovered a check engine light, I hooked up the laptop, and I read the codes. Turns out I had a couple codes which were pointing to problems with the exhaust temperature sensors. After cracking those sensors open and resoldering a couple joints, I was hoping that my problems were over. But that wasn't the case because now we had a traction control fault. So now it's time to dig a little bit deeper, find our issue, and correct the problem. So it came back out underneath the hood and I removed both air boxes to check everything out. Everything on the right side looked good, but not so much on the left side. And I believe I found our problem. If you look right here, this is our connector for our mass airflow sensor. And if you look, you can see there's a lot of insulation missing off of these wires. And these things can touch and short out and cause a lot of problems. And that appears to be what our problem actually is on this side on the mass airflow sensor. So it might be kind of hard to see, but you can see it's really tight right here. And that's where the harness usually sits. And the turbo is right below that. It gets extremely hot here, which can make wires and stuff really brittle, just like these right here. So I was going to attempt to replace these wires one by one, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my local salvage yard, and I'm going to grab one of these plugs. Now you can grab one of these plugs pretty much from any kind of late model Volkswagen or Audi vehicle, as long as it's a 5-pin, and it'll be a pretty easy repair. So I've went back and I've checked all the wiring underneath the hood, and everything seems to be pretty good. That seems to be our only issue, but now it kind of makes me wonder, is that tied in to all the other sensor faults that were happening with the exhaust temperature sensor, the brake booster sensor, and the MAP sensor? So I need to take a look at the Bentley wiring diagram in the service manual, and that way I can determine if some of that wiring is connected to the other sensors, and that might be causing our implausible signals and our shorts to ground. So after looking at these codes, I started thinking, are these codes somehow connected? And as you see down here on engine two, we also have an exhaust temperature sensor bank two, which leads me to believe that we have a problem that connects all of these together. And if we go over here to our wiring diagram, right here, 735 F5 fuse goes to bank two exhaust sensor, and it also goes to bank sensor exhaust one. It also ties in to the coolant temperature sensor at the radiator outlet here at this splice. So when we go over here and we check out our vacuum pump, our vacuum pump uses the same 5 amp fuse. It goes to the relay and to the ECM. Those seem to all be connected. So when we go over here and we look at F5, it has the airflow meters, exhaust temperature sensors, and the vacuum pump. We need to check that fuse in that circuit and see if we have any kind of problems. We know that all three of these are connected and maybe there is a short to ground and this is what is causing our problems. Now that we've looked at the wiring diagram, it's time to head to the salvage yard and get that harness that we need. So I'm at the local salvage yard and I hate coming over here because I usually end up leaving like I do Walmart. You go in for one thing and you leave with five other things that you need. Now here's something you don't see at modern junkyards too often. 48 Chevrolet Style Master. This thing's pretty cool, even though it's kind of rough. Now I managed to grab a couple of these mass air sensor connectors at the junkyard. So we got one that we can use and we've got a spare for maybe a future project. And now this is a little bit different design than the one that's on the car. Now this one has a nice rubber boot and a nice heat shielding. So I think that's the one I'm going to use. And basically it fits right in just like the factory one would. As you see the color coding on the new harness doesn't match up with the old harness. But that's okay. I'm just going to splice these in one at a time, making sure they're in the right position. The new harness plug is in and it's all soldered together and heat shrinked and I've got this thing wrapped with some uh, heat shield and some nice high quality electrical tape and I think this is the best repair you could make outside of replacing the wiring harness which is out of the question for sure. 
and here's the old plug and as you can see it has seen better days and you can see how bad that wiring was just chewed up and I'm glad I got that taken care of and hopefully our new plug is going to fix our problems. Well now that we got that harness taken care of we can check out that 5 amp fuse that fuse that we saw on the chart that supplies power to all our sensors and to get to that that fuse block is underneath this cowling so we're going to need to remove that. The fuse block that I need to get to is tucked underneath right here in the corner and it's really not easy to get to. I'm going to need to remove that washer bottle or at least remove the screws and move it over so I can pop that lid off right there. Well it wasn't too hard to get that off but it was a little bit more challenging than what it should have been and after a quick vacuum after all that trash that fell down in there it's time to find the fuse that we're looking for and the one that we're looking for is a 5 amp fuse. This one right here if I can get that out, we'll check it and see if it's blown. Might be kind of hard to see, but it actually looks like it's good, so I don't think we have an issue there. So I put that thing back in, and I just went ahead and checked all those fuses to make sure they're good. Now, we didn't have any problems, but I figured while I was here, just might as well go ahead and do that. And now we can go ahead and put this thing back together and see if our check engine lights are fixed. <laughs> Back with the laptop hooked up, the repairs made, and the codes cleared, it's time to see if our repairs made a difference. Alright, let's see if this thing will start. So far, so good. She's running smooth. We don't have any lights. We'll just have to let this thing run for a minute, and then we'll do a scan with the laptop. And as you can see, the numbers look really good there uh, as far as like the mass airflow sensor, the voltage, the coolant temperature sensor, the air intake temperature sensor. Now, if you remember, we had that mass airflow sensor fault and the intake temperature sensor fault, and those both look good. And so does the actual brake booster pressure down there at the bottom. It seems like it is actually reading pressure, so maybe we've helped fix that problem too. And here you can see we have no misfires on one through nine cylinders. And we'll click up and no misfires on 10 through 12 so that's a really good sign that everything's working like it should and here you have engine module 2 and as you can see we have no fault codes and that's a good sign because that means that our wiring repair and that soldering repair fixed our exhaust temperature sensors now that's a good sign because those things like I stated before are 750 to 800 dollars for the pair and they're not exactly fun to put on they're kind of hard to get out of the exhaust so we're lucky we don't have to do that everything looks good so I think now we just need to drive this thing around and uh, enjoy it and see if we have any more issues that pop up and hopefully those check engine lights and everything will stay off now this repair shows that with a little bit of diagnostic work you can save a lot of money and that throwing parts at a problem is not always the best solution. So I would like to say thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video click the like button and if you're not subscribed to my channel click the subscribe button click the bell so you'll get the notifications and you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram.